Hey guys, so here's a short video. This is a question I had on a video to show the components and just sum them up a little. So here we are a little bit closer because my 20 minute blah blah video. Yeah, I know it's blah blah, but um, as I said, I suck at this YouTube thing. Um, the video is recorded in uh, vertical because it will fit everything easier in screen. Uh, so here we start at the, uh, start at the rack first. Though this is not really a rack. This is a shelf system. Don't mind the wiring people. I need to redo everything. But these are all in the studs. Uh, so this is a floating rack. Uh, nothing is hitting the floor here or anything. Um, so um, it has its benefits. It has its downside too. You can't move the setup in any formal way unless I go for an actual rack. And as you can see, I have to paint it around it and all that stuff. But um, these are steel shelves. As you can see, they're hanging right there in the studs. Uh, they're steel. Um, they're also ventilated and they have a gap in the back so wiring can go through it. Um, it wonderful, wonderful system. Uh, this comes from a, a previous friend of mine who is no longer, we're no longer on speaking terms really. But uh, he gave them to me. I got about 13 of these shelves. I have them downstairs in the garage as well which I might even use in my secondary setup. I really like them. Uh, the downside is you cannot move it, but the upside is it's completely decoupled from the floor or anything. Now that doesn't mean that your system cannot catch any resonances from the walls and that and, and etc. but it does eliminate a lot of, you know, from the floor itself. So um, now let's start at the top here. This is my uh, pride and joy right now. This is my Pioneer PL707. Uh, this uh, turntable is a full automatic quartz lock. Uh, I get it. <laughs> I had it as a Lego brick. I still need to clean it a little bit better. But uh, I had to clean this one up completely. I bought it really cheap. Um, I needed to do some work to it. But uh, she runs really fine. Uh, there's a couple of uh, nice features that I've done to it. Nothing, uh, nothing excessive or crazy. So uh, the cart is an XUV 4500Q or a Q4500. It's actually a CD4 cart. Um, um, I don't use it as such. It has a Jaiko uh, stylus on it, Shibata. Um, uh, again, I had that one on my Sansui uh, SR626 that I have downstairs. It's a manual table, which I don't really use anymore. But um, I bought that one really cheap and the cart alone was worth the purchase. Uh, the carts like this are about 250 bucks and the stylus itself is very expensive. It's close to $200. Uh, I found a cheaper stylus for it. It's just fine for my purposes. You know, I'm not, a, uh, I'm not a perfectionist if it comes to that. Vinyl has that characteristic sound to it, which I really love and this table does it. I have a weight on here. Uh, this weight, uh, this is not a clamp, this is a weight. Very nice actually because it comes with a leveler as well. Uh, and it has, um, uh, you can see the RPMs on it. You should probably use a strobe of some sort or a light, which I don't use. It's a little bit off tilter from the center, but it's pretty close. So it's kind of nice that you have the bubble. Then the Hudson Hi-Fi uh, anti-static arm, uh, which I have. It has a conductive bristle on it, as you can see here, and it goes through the phono amp. My preamp is just a Pile uh, 444. Now, I know that some people would cringe over it. I have really never had an issue with it. Now, is there better? I'm pretty sure there is, but so far I have not needed that. There's a second table on the way for downstairs, but I'm gonna make a separate video about that. It's really cool. It's an RPM one uh, project. So I just bought it yesterday, so I'm waiting for that one. But um, this table is from 83, I believe. It was only produced for one year. Um, beautiful, I love this table. It's, it's really beautifully done too. The plinth is beautiful. You, know, you can see these nice edged round or, or, or these nice polished edges. You see it up there here too on the arm. Uh, Anti-skating, of course. It's a full auto table. So start, stop, no problem. Uh, the arm moves. It has its own independent bell-driven uh, arm. Uh, these are exactly the same as the PL505s, but the PL505s, all the hardware is black. Um, this arm is a, uh, was a DRA arm. It has some dampener on there. Uh, it is a composite arm. Um, it has, you know, fiber reinforced, whatever proprietary crap that they used. Uh, wonderful table, really love it. So that's my cherry on top of this setup. Then I have my Onkyo Integra. Uh, this is a uh, DX706. Uh, it's from the R1 series. This uh, player was actually a necessity because I had a Pioneer before. There's a Pioneer Elite, which I liked. Didn't really love it. It was just a decent player. I don't have many CDs and not so much vinyl either. I do a lot of streaming, so I'm just just to put it out there. Um, but um, 
thanks to this player, I started to expand my CD collection uh, with a good bit. Um, this player is awesome. Uh, I never had an Ankyo before, but um, just to give you an example, it's an extremely fast player too. Uh, this thing is just insane. Uh, let's see if I can get some more light here. Sorry about that, guys. I'm, as I said, I suck at this. Um, this thing here is a steel drawer or aluminum, whatever it is. I've never seen that before in a CD player. Um, it has an AccuPulse uh, digital audio converter in it. What I also like, it has um, it has headphone um, settings, um, controls, whatever. Not you don't see that anymore at you know at the new stuff. It's just it's just not on there. Uh, so there's the second component, I guess. Uh, then we have the Monster Power HTS 3600. Now, um, for me personally, I do not hear the difference between a conditioner or not a conditioner. Maybe my power is good enough. Maybe I'm just deaf to it. I don't know. Give it a name. Uh, I know that some people will hear a huge difference. I never have. But it is darn convenient because most your wires, although it doesn't look like it, but most your wires will go in there, most your power cords. So everything is hooked up to it, amplifier, all that stuff. Um, it's a really good unit. It's been in there for a couple of years now and it's never given me any issues. I like you can read the amperage and also you can read the voltage off of it. Uh, they're really well-built units. They're old, but they're but they're not obsolete to me. Um, they have a function, switched, switched outlets. Uh, when the power goes off, it protects my setup too. So it's kind of a little bit of a reassurance. Then the heart of the system here is my Anthem MRX 510. Um, I absolutely love this unit. If this unit would blow up today or does something crazy, it will be replaced by another Anthem. The reason why I went for Anthem here, guys... I know that a lot of people cringe by the thought of a home theater setup, but with me, it needs to do both. And to get the quality that I required to uh, really get some decent home theater, but also separate the 2.0 part of it, this was for me the way to go because the stereo input has a completely different crossover settings and etc. etc. really catered to 2.0. And the quality is there. It takes all the frills out of everything. The Arc Genesis software is highly, highly recommended by me personally uh, because it's so easy to use. Even a dummy like me can use it relatively easy. You sit on your laptop, you can see everything that's going on, what the speakers are doing. I do not room correct because these speakers do not really adhere well to the program itself. And I've noticed that with other room corrections too. These are dipole speakers, as you know, and line source. So they do like that little bit of reflection from the walls, etc. So there's the heart. Here we have the Crown XLS 2502. Uh, that one is running uh, the massive 18 inch subs in the back. Uh, it's, set to, uh, it's set to mono, uh, bridge mono. So it's about 2.4 kilowatts that these woofers get. Now people go like, yeah, but you don't need that much. It's pure for control. These, <laughs> this thing will never go one, never go to the second LED. It's really very uh, 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 sparingly tuned to my ears. It really is. So it's not like this is a boom box. Then I have a Pioneer Elite. Um, what is it? The PDF ninety five, I believe, if I remember right. Uh, BDF ninety five, uh, Blu ray player. It's old, and that one really needs needs actually a replacement. But that's really for the home theater. Um, it's not my favorite player by any means, so I might have to replace that with something nicer. Then I have my Infinity Cooler on top of the Crestron CNMP X7, and the CNMP X7 is basically the ATI equivalent of it. Uh, ATI built this amplifier. It's a seven-channel amplifier. As you can see the incandescent LED or whatever the heck it is going out these are not new amplifiers by any means it's a massive amplifier it weighs 97 pounds it's class a b i got two of these i got one in reserve as well and as you can see these are a little bit banged up because these were used in you know uh in the more uh, home theater setups uh professionally as well as i understood uh crestron um is basically ati 1807 it's the same topology same design everything all american built uh, it's huge. If you can find one of these, they go for about a thousand dollars now or so. It's totally worth it. Monolith makes one too, but they use really Chinese parts to suppress the price. I have heard they have some quality issues with those amps. I cannot verify that. I can also not verify or tell you anything about the differences between this and that. Sonic wise, 
yeah she's not pretty but this thing runs so well i do recommend a cooler because this is a seven channel seven times 200 watts in class a b uh in eight ohm and it's like uh, seven times 400 watts and, and four ohm. And it's even stable down to two ohm, I believe. It's not specified, but it is. Uh, this thing is massive. It's all modular too. Every channel has its own power supply, uh, caps, etc., etc. You can literally pull a channel out and replace it or service it. So it's a beautiful amp. Uh, look into these things if, you, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for some decent audio quality without breaking your wallet. That's the way to go to me, in humble opinion. Now, the speakers you guys already kind of know. These are the Monoliths, uh, uh, Monoliths 10-inch THX certified woofers. Uh, crazy deep. Uh, in my subwoofer video, I had some flack from someone said that I should find a psychiatrist. Well, you know, you do you, I do me. You are not relevant to me in what I like. So there's that. Uh, everybody does their own thing. This is what I do. Um, of course, the timpanies, uh, they're not going anywhere. So there you go, guys. 11 minutes of uh, my setup here. Uh, oh, the TV is a Hisense. This one is uh, really could be replaced there uh, before people think like it's an awful looking screen. It's not that awful, really, but uh, it, it could be better. It's a uh, 75 inch. That's because I focus on, on, on these things here. But, um, but yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, that's it. That's kind of my components here so far. Uh, hopefully you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.